I've been thinking recently, Jim. For many oh, years, well, for many years, I've been the kind of guitar player that buys a new guitar, and I want that guitar to be perfect out of the box. That's very important to me. If I spend money on something that's meant to be new, that it is new. The last couple of years, I've bought three or four relic guitars, and I just thought as I unboxed an, unboxed an old Gallagher the other day to myself, hang on, I've just bought the most expensive guitar I've ever bought, and it is dinged up intentionally. And I got really into thinking about the psychology and the rationale behind this. And I know that relic guitars are such a hot topic on forums, as many things are, of course. But I wanted to do this uh, discussion today about the whole thing. And I'm sure people watching this video have strong opinions as well. So please put those in the comments below the video. But I just want to do an informal discussion to see what we can get to the bottom of in regards to relic guitars. So I did a bit of research online and I believe the custom shop at Fender started doing this. And I read a really cool story that when they first introduced them at NAMM, of course, some of the dealers said, what the heck are you doing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Which I can, I, can, I, can, I can understand. And there's even a part in that story. And if you want to learn more, I'll put a link below to like an article you can read about this in your own time. But there's a story of one dealer couldn't sell any relics and they had to send them to another dealer in another state and they could sell the relics. So people were very um, divisive about this topic when they first announced them. And looking back myself, I didn't like the idea of relics or even like ripped jeans or I still, well, I still don't for many years. And then it's funny how over the years we can change our opinions. And now obviously I do like uh, relics because I, I own some. So what was your first experience with a relic guitar? My first experience with the Relic guitar was a guitar that was not Relic from the factory, believe it or not. I got this Jazzmaster without a scratch, without a ding, and now this thing has checking all over it. Fender could probably sell this for a boatload of money. It looks like there's been screwdriver divots and all this stuff from just playing it out, playing it live, and all of that. And that to me was really cool. And that led me to, at first when I saw them from Fender, I thought it was ridiculous because in the 90s, the majority of the guitars they sold, as you kind of alluded to, were kind of either really modern and a lot of bird's eye maple and things like that and just like perfect pristine colors, which is what, you know, you would expect at that kind of price point. When I first started to see them going up for sale, I thought, who was going to buy this? Like, why would anybody spend this much money to do this? And vintage guitars weren't as expensive back then either. Then I saw them, you know, become more popular to the fact that the Mexican lines had those. Those are, those are over 10 years old now at this point. And I never really loved them until one day I found a custom shop that was about the price of an American original, which is a production guitar, a Telecaster. And I, I bought it. And I didn't care that it was beat up because when I sat and I played it, I was like, oh, I get it. The neck felt really worn into it. It just played like a dream. It sounded great, and the build was better than most of the other Fenders I had played. So to me, I didn't buy it or was looking for it because it was a relic, but because I, I tried it in person, there is a difference in feel. And there's obviously different you know kinds of levels to relicing. You have light relics and then super, super heavy where the paint is off the entire guitar. It's it, it does kind of remind you of an old guitar if you've played a lot of old guitars, and there's definitely a cool appeal to that. I gotta say, a lot of the old guitars I've played haven't been that age, though. I, I mean, I'm sure some are, but just <laughs> that so happens that the ones that I've played are maybe less relic than the ones that I actually bought relic. I, like you said, there's different stages. I used to like the closet classic, like the really light aging, um, so you get the feel of the neck. You're absolutely right. Like a brand new neck can be kind of sticky and just feel new. And I do like it when they just slightly roll the fret edges and they're slightly worn but the guitar still looks new. So actually, interestingly enough, for many years, I was into that. Is that a normal thing, like over the years, to get more used to it, maybe? And then eventually you like them really relic over time? I wonder if some players went straight into liking the super relic guitars from day one. That'd be an interesting thing to know. But, but the thing you just said, though, is that your experience of relic guitar was your own guitar that got kind of relic. But is that so how what's, what's the difference then between a guitar that we relic ourselves and a guitar that we buy relic and and some people say online that it's too fake like you want that ding to be the ding that you put in there when you were playing a gig in chicago in 2015 and you remember that night or coming back to you when you see that ding rather than a ding that was put in 
at the factory. For me, I don't I don't care like about that part of it. I I don't have the snobbery towards it, but I do appreciate it more than I did it because like perfect example again with this guitar, the paint here is worn off only because of years of me having the way I sit with it. So it, nobody else will have it relic in the same exact spot in the same exact way. Yeah, there are one-off things and I can remember where I got them and stuff like that, but knowing that this guitar did age because of how I play it and my tendencies, I think that's really cool, but I don't think that's the end all because even with the Telecaster or any other relic guitar that you buy, if you're actually using it, you're going to ding it up more. I mean, the, it's not going to stay the way that the, the factory gave it to you unless you, you keep it in its case all the time. You don't really use it. But for somebody like you or somebody like me who's really going to use the guitars, and I hope that you do gig with that Noel Gallagher guitar because it's such an inspiring guitar to just – even just mm. to look at and to hear, it really is. And it's just like – it shows like a sense of like authority to it. It's it's so cool. I know. I know. when you When you're doing that – you're going to ding it up a little bit here and there. And I also think it kind of takes the edge off. You're not like, I don't want to put the first ding in this absolutely perfect guitar. So I could see right. it from that perspective too. Right. Because you won't know where the ding is. That's another topic for another day about the Noel Gallagher. Because part of me bought it to keep it here in the apartment for YouTube. And part of me bought it thinking maybe in 30 years time, if you know, if you know, it can be my retirement, towards my retirement or something. I actually think that should be the guitar that I take out and use. And the funny thing about that is that Noel Gallagher says the same about his guitar that I read online. He bought his as a collectible and he loved it so much he just gigs it all the time. And I love that because I know, that, again, another video topic, but instruments are there to be played, right? I mean, you can collect them, but they're there to make music. So we can talk about that another time. But yeah, that is a great guitar and I, I'm kind of... That's the most heavy relic I've ever had, so I'm a little bit kind of still getting my head around that. But I, I'm okay with that because they've basically copied his guitar. So rather than the signature guitar where they've just taken one and put his name on it, his name's not even on it. They've just copied the guitar that he loves. And I think that is a great idea. You said something really interesting, that the way that we relic the guitars is done through our playing. So I, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. That's really important because if we look at a relic guitar where it's worn, they may have done it in a in a conventional place where it wears for everyone, but you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm really tall and, and hold the guitar a certain way and strum a certain way. So the way that I wear the, like an acoustic, the sound hole, the way I hit with my pick is gonna be different to you. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't tell the story of you, it tells the story of a generic story, right? It's like a movie rather than our life story. So that's a really good point that I hadn't thought of. But you also mentioned comfort, and I, I do feel that they are comfortable. But I'm seeing things get more relict. When I did that unboxing, I was thinking to myself, I like how Fender do it, and I think Sir as well. They tend to relic the body heavily, but leave the neck pristine. So that Gibson 355 Noel Gallagher threw me, because I was like, oh, I'm not used to seeing a neck like that. And actually, the, the Martin behind me that I'm going to show you in a second has that on the neck as well, a little bit. Really? So they seem to be now re aging, the, starting to go that way. I think, I think they're going more and more and more and more. I'm going to grab that Martin behind me now, and I'm going to show it to you. Okay. So this is a Martin Authentic Aged 1937. And I think the acoustic aging wasn't really a thing, was it? Not like the electric aging. No. I feel like it came later, and I never thought Martin would do this. But now I think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Because I was looking at Carter Vintage at actual guitars from this time frame, or slightly after, and they are 30,000, there's a video of it on my channel of one of them, like $35,000 guitar, I played another one that was uh, 35, they got up to over 100,000, like, like the Gibsons too. So it makes sense for me with this guitar because it is built to the exact spec of the time, obviously within reason, there's no Brazilian rosewood, this is Madagascar, it's not Brazilian. But it's, it looks a bit like um, Brazilian, if you look at the grain. It's beautiful. So it really is. It re it's a really cool guitar. And it's also got the huge neck as well, of course, because that's what they had at the time. Although the one that I played at Carter's had a thin neck. Maybe that got sanded down. I don't know. But I like this because, and they make it aged and non-aged as well. It gives you the experience, because this is meant to be a 1937 guitar. 
and when you hold it, I'm like, I'm holding a guitar from 1937 because of how it looks. So what do you think about acoustic guitars versus electric guitars being, this is age, but you know, relic? You think it's the same I thing? Think, yeah, I, I don't see what makes it that much different mm. in theory. I mean, you're still adding artificial aging to an instrument. So whether or not it's an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, I don't I don't really see a big difference between the two of them. And I don't think, I don't know, I don't get why there's just as much sheer hatred for it. Like there's a lot of relics that, you know, I might not be the biggest fan of, but the beauty of life is I don't have to buy it. Like, and some yeah. people, they just, they can't get around that. Like, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it is. But especially with that guitar that is going for a very specific time and a very specific model to, to be a time machine. That's, yes. that's really cool. They make these um, aged and non-aged. Mm -hmm. One cool thing about the, the aged is they also use a thinner finish on the top. And acoustic guitar builders always say that thinner finishes, you know, will sound different. So you can't, you do get some sonic differences with that as well. But let's just check out the aging on this. I think it's done really well. And I've had guitars in the past that have had these kind of things. Like if you look here, the w I had a Taylor years ago that wore like this, start to wear right through. They haven't gone right through the wood, but you can see where it would start to. Obviously the pick marks here. Now, if you don't play with a pick, this wouldn't be appropriate to you, would it? Well, I guess it would be someone else's uh, wear again. I do yeah. play with a pick, so I, I would I wouldn't wear it like that. And then look, the tailor I had was doing this as well. This is all very um, real. And then this one here, I've never done that on a guitar, but I guess if it's from if it really was from 1937, I guess you would do that. And then with an acoustic, the interesting thing is they also age inside the guitar. They have to. Because if you took off the strings to restring and for some reason looked inside the sound hole, you'd be like, oh, why does that look brand new? So they've actually aged inside, like you can't see obviously, but the bracing inside is, is um, discolored and they've, they've put some stuff inside to make it look older inside as well. That's cool. So the neck on this one, I'm not sure. Yeah, there you go. Look, you see that wear there? Mm -hmm. That's where you'd be playing your G, open G, open E, open D. So that is realistic. But again, I don't like the idea of the neck having any marks on it, but you don't really feel it. It's more like under the finish. It's more of a visual thing. And then obviously the tuners have to be aged. Um, let's see if I can get that on there. So there's, they're, they're discolored. There's some dings in the headstock where you would have dinged it on the desk. <laughs> Look, you see that? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's almost, it's almost yeah. see I'm in two minds about this. Part of me is laughing. That's my honest reaction. It is kind of like crazy. Like, let me take it back again. If I ding a new Martin like that, I can't sleep at night. And I bought this one. <laughs> like, why? Why? I don't get it. But uh, it is a great guitar and it adds to the experience and it feels great. And I think it looks cool. Now, some people are going to say it looks awful and why didn't you just buy the new one or even a modern one? It's just an experience. It's a different experience. And to buy the actual guitar this is based off would be Oof. hundreds of thousands. So there you go. Yeah, you could also say, well, this guitar has a glued on neck. You know, it's got a truss rod, but you can't adjust it. Some people would say, I wouldn't buy that. I'd buy one with an adjust adjustable truss rod. But that wasn't done until the 80s. The old Martins had this kind of construction. The saddle is glued in. You can't just pull the saddle out and file it down. You have to take it off the top of the saddle. That's a real hassle. I hope to never have to do that. And if I do have to do something like that, I would take it to Martin and pay a lot of money to do that as well. Oh, yeah. So there's other things there as well with the construction. But this aging thing, I know, I think with this particular guitar, it works really well. And look, there's even a ding here too at the back. Yeah, I see it. And just again, yeah, one more story. I had a new HD28. I did a review of a Fishman uh, MIDI system and I stuck it on that guitar. I didn't use 3M Velcro. I used their tape in the box and it left a big ding like that on the back. And I sold that guitar for a loss because I just never liked the ding in it. And I bought this one with the ding in it. So I just want to put that in there, you know, why not? It's part, it's part of the discussion. It's your think, psychology. I think it's because and this will sound really crazy. 
someone at, <laughs> I can't even say it on camera, <laughs> someone at Martin did this and I paid for them to do this. The new one I bought, I did it, I damaged, or, or let's say someone at the st at store or whatever did it. Not that, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying for an example. Or let's say you came over here and you ding, you bashed it against the table. That's different to like, this is how it was supposed to ship from the factory. And that might sound absolutely nuts, but that's the only way that I can um, rationalize it myself. I want to show you the custom shop because it, it shows you, or it'll show the viewer kind of what you were talking about as far as the neck aging on it. So this guitar is based off of a 60s model. It's one of the double bound versions of it. The aging of it is is very minimal, right? But it's definitely there. The closer you get, the worse it gets as far as, you know, you can start to see a lot of checking and dings. But the neck on it, there's a little dirt just for me playing it, but it looks off off the shelf as far as brand newness. There's no real wear compared to that Gibson or the Martin in that sense. And I think when you were earlier talking about Fender, that's a really valid point. I don't there I've seen some Fender necks that are just destroyed on the back, like entirely, but for the most part, I think that's the exception and not so much the rule when it comes to how they'll wear the neck a little bit. And I, I like that. They will sand them, but they won't put dings in them. Like But no. my guitars don't have dings in them anyway. But some people do, right? Some people get those big dings in the neck and you feel it. So that can be a problem. But I did try one once with the skunk stripe and I could feel that. And that, I don't think that was a humidity thing. That's obviously going to happen from that. I think when they sanded the neck down, the skunk stripe, skunk stripe didn't get sanded down and I could feel it. And I don't like that. I like the neck to be very smooth on the guitar. Yeah. I, I don't like it when it when the skunk stripe is coming out. And I also don't like it when there's too much finish on it. And then that's one of the reasons I don't like a lot of new Fender guitars that don't have a satin finish because it feels like once I start to actually sweat and dig into it, my hand is sticking to the back of the guitar. So I'm going to try and find a way to sand it down myself. But then if I want to sell the guitar on, I've sanded off part of it. And maybe the person who wants to buy it doesn't want it like that. It's just I'd rather have it done from the factory, as you said. Yes. And then it's yeah. not somebody else's guitar or somebody else did this. It was done from Fender. And that's that, that point is very good. I think that that's something that's worth taking note of. When you know the guitar shipped like that, if there was a big ding in the front of that Telecaster nobody would care but if i go to sell that and i'm like yeah i put that ding in it and fendered it and if i disclose that they'd be like oh well I, i'm gonna pay you significantly less for that if i'm interested in buying that because that's not how it came from the factory despite the fact that there's all the other cosmetic flaws on it from the factory now there's a problem with buying and selling i want to touch on this today as well <laughs> i emailed someone on reverb about a relic guitar so it was a strat i think and i said oh i can see a ding in the back of the neck of this relic guitar did you cause that in the store? And then guess what they said? It's part of the relicking. How do you know you if it's damaged or not? You won't. That's why the are pe here's, here's a quick rant. Why are people listing relic guitars used on reverb as mint condition and saying they're flawless? Because I, that, that, that absolutely cracks me up. I want to tell you that for a long time. Isn't that, isn't that crazy when you think about it? Hey, I'm selling this guitar. <laughs> It's in perfect condition, mint, pristine. No, but there's all dings all over. Oh yeah, that, that was Relic from Martin. Yeah, I want full price, I want more than I paid for it. No, but you, that really cracks me up. When I first realized that a few months ago when I was sitting on Reverb, I was like, this is nuts. <laughs> I struggled with that. When I sold uh, the, the custom shop Jaguar that was relic I didn't know how to rate it. Because I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is clearly dinged up, but it also, came to me dinged up in this way do i write mint do i write excellent do i write good do i write very good it's it's a very subjective thing but you could also it's like you could almost shoot yourself in the foot so to speak if you're the seller if you sell it exactly as you got it and it was in that mint condition that it, it was received in but you say yeah you know it's in very good condition or good somebody might be like oh well, what's wrong with it why isn't it listed mint like all the other used relics there must be something about it that makes it a right. little bit different right so Great point. so you so you have right. to go along with it Great point. So resale value could be a real the resale problem. value is really but the resale value is really good on these 
because of that, I feel like, because you mm. you can get away with it. It's not good because it can lead to somebody being a little dishonest. You can say, oh, yeah, yeah blame it on the factory. It was this relic, knowing in the back of your head, be like, yeah, I did that. You know what I mean? And that's it's a yeah. tough line to cross. But at the end of the day, if the person really wants that kind of beat up guitar anyways, I don't know. It's weird. You're this right. Guitar, I don't like it. <laughs> this guitar is mint because I've only played it at home. And it's always in the yeah. case, and I know I haven't knocked it into anything. But even just looking at the back now, I can see like some little scratches on the back, which is the first thing to go on an acoustic when you're playing it. I can't, you can't, even, you can't even see it on the camera. But yeah, how how would they? Do? If I put one in right now, you would never be able to prove that I did it. No. So that's something to consider with a guitar like this. Um, I really think for a lot of players like myself, though, a relic or an age guitar is to use. And I think, yeah, I think reselling guitars like this could be a problem. You said they might keep their value, but I don't know. I, I feel like a brand new HD28 is a lot easier to sell than this. Or also, perhaps, well, other, other factors too. I think perhaps in the acoustic market, you're right. But in the electric market, I follow that like really closely. It's, it's, it's shocking to me when... Those guitars go out of production because Fender changes, you know, a lot of their lineup from the custom shop every year based on colors and different kind of neck specifications and things of that kind of nature. When they're out of production and they go back up for resale, they're worth more than they were initially, like 90% of the time, so long as the guitar isn't like physically damage damage to the point of you know that it wasn't from the factory like that. They tend to resell very well. Funny enough, I see a lot of these on the used market, but I think that could be construction as well. Because I think, like with these guitars, people want to buy into the history, but then they realize the neck is really big. They can't adjust it easily. They can't lower the, the saddle. They can't install an under saddle pickup. And I've also noticed on these, on both these Martins and also the Sir guitars, they leave the frets. It's not fret spray, but they leave them, or they roll the edges so much that you can feel the fret. Whereas yeah. on modern guitars you can't; it's all smooth. So some people might not like that, you know. So you got if you are look if you're thinking about buying a relic guitar, that's why you're watching this video. Do bear that in mind as well. Like play some guitars and make sure you you know what you're looking for at the time. But they're very clever here because they make this one, which is basically a recreation of the original guitar. They make the modern standard series, which is just some, uh, accessible to everybody, and they now make the modern deluxe, which is elements of this, but then some modern technology as well. And I think that's what all the builders should do, offer us those three lanes. And Fender do too, right? So with Fender, you can buy the standard series. No? No. I I'm not under sure. I'm not positive of why they decide to do this. But for the guitars that do come as new old stock without any relicking or things of that nature, unless you're ordering it directly from them as a one-off, the production ones that the team builds they're they're not coming in that kind of in the same traditional kind of finishes that you might be able to get with like a Gibson. Um, you're gonna get a sparkle finish or some really flashy things. You're not gonna be able to get a classic color like um, Sonic Blue or Olympic White, or like a really traditional color in that new old stock new. And you're definitely not getting it with the seven and a quarter radius, which is the vintage radius. And I'm not sure why they decided to do this. Almost everything from the custom shop is the modern nine and a half inch radius, which is what's standard on even your American Professional 2, for example. The ones that do have the seven and a quarter radius, it's a compound neck. So it starts as seven two five and then goes down to nine and a half or more, depending on the model. So mm. Fender are kind of missing that side of the market, whereas I feel like mm. Gibson and Martin are, mm. are doing a great job saying, okay, you want one modern cool you want one that's old but not beat up cool you want one that's old and beat up cool we have something yeah. for everybody fender don't have that unless you want to go directly to them and have it specced out entirely from scratch and that could be a long wait time and you're not getting any discount on that well i guess what i meant is they make the american pro 2 they make the ultra and then oh, you can sure. you can look around dealers and find like a relic to old 60s style i guess i meant that although it can be hard to find guitars right now but yeah, I like. I think sure. Martin have done, and Gibson, like you said, have done a good thing with this. The aged original, the non-aged original, the standard series, and the modern series, which is yeah. still kind of... And then you've got like the SC13s, like the really... So they're, they're covering all of the... They're trying to cover every base there. And the custom shop. So I think that's pretty cool. Let's check out that Gibson. Because I know you want to see it. This guitar is not light. 
I presume because of the Bigsby is adding weight. Yeah. You're adding about a pound with the Bigsby. Yeah. So this is just over nine pounds. So yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, from a distance, like I said in my unboxing, not too bad, right? Kind of looks like a guitar. Then you turn it over. <laughs> I know you love this. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what happened? It got dragged down the highway. So what do you think of that? I mean, that is, it's okay. If they're copying Noel's guitar, that's why they've done it, okay? I love the yellowing. I love uh, this yellowing of the binding is awesome. And that's what happens with these guitars. My, my guitar did that too. And then there's a few things on the back, but not again, not too many. But the neck is kind of crazy. Like the way they've left those yeah. flakes on there. I mean, if I play this regularly, are they going to come off on my hand? Naturally? I, you would think, yes, over time, because of the finish on it, the nitro, it's, it's going to continue to wear off. Yeah. So eventually, I would like, I mean, I, I think that actually feels great when it's just um, flat like that. But <laughs> same thing with this. There is a small de uh, dent ding in the wood. And in my video, I said, is that the custom shop? I don't think it was. I think that was done someone by someone else at Gibson or um, Sweetwater or someone else along the way. But again, you would never know. And they could always argue that it was done as part of the thing. But the yeah. neck shape is so good. And I, Again, on a guitar from this year, I thought the neck could be a, a, a real fat neck. This, this a, It's a very thin neck. And I really like it. I really I love the shape. So this is the opposite of the Martin. This is very comfortable to play. And I just think the aging of this just gives a mojo. I mean, look, at, I, I can't get over the binding. The binding, the way it's white here, and it goes to yellow here. And then you've obviously you've got the checking, which the Martin had as well. I didn't really show it to you. But if I look, put that in the light, you see again, if my guitar did that overnight, I'd, I'd, I'd be crying. But I think it looks so cool on here. So maybe now I, I agree with you. Maybe I would love I it if my if my guitars did do this overnight now because I'm used to it. Look at the pickups. My, one of my first guitars was a Sheraton when I was in my teenage years in a band, and I left it back home and I moved here and I, I did sell it on, but I had someone clean it up and and they they were like that and they cleaned up perfectly. All the gold cleaned up perfectly because it tarnishes over time, and that guitar looked brand new. So that's why I have a bit of a problem with this. My old guitars that I have had over the, for long many years have not really aged, and I have used them a lot. I guess I'm just super careful with stuff. If this was really from the 60s, I guess it would have aged like this, right? Yep. Not, it's, it's had more time. But no, I just, I just absolutely love it. And the other thing I want to put in this conversation is what I love, personally, is that they just built the guitar. It's, new, it's a new build, but it looks old. The problem I have with buying a vintage, vintage instrument is that it may have issues. What do you think about that? Do you think there's any value in that? Yes. Uh, I would never, and I would highly recommend against this for most people, buy a vintage guitar without playing it first, ever. Mm. Because as pretty as they may look, it might look exactly like that. But when you get in there in person, you'd be like, oh, God, like this, this neck feels off. Maybe somebody did sand down the neck because they thought the neck was too big on it. That was a very common thing, especially for Gibson guitars. People weren't comfortable with it. So they would have it actually sanded down so the profile would get a little bit slimmer on it. You might not like it. The electronics might not be perfect. You might be really scratchy. There's little things that you don't know until you have it in your hands that make it a very expensive gamble, whereas... Yes, you did buy that Noel Gallagher. Yes, and it does have some wear on it, and especially on the neck, it's, it's more severe than it anywhere else. But when you bought it, did you have any concerns whatsoever that it wasn't going to sound amazing, function perfect, perfectly out of the box, and play great? No, you didn't. And that's part of the risk of buying a vintage guitar versus buying something new like that. So there are pros and cons to both. Well, I did. I was worried. I spent a lot of money on this guitar. I was worried that maybe I wouldn't like it. As soon as they told me the weight, I thought I may have made a mistake. I almost canceled the order because I found a, a $3,000 335 that was light. And I thought to myself, the mature thing to do here is to get that one and use it and make it the Aaron Short guitar. But I am just such a huge Noel Gallagher fan. He got me into the guitar. He got me into music. And I know if you don't buy these guitars when they release them, you'll never get one again. Because there's only 200, and they'll some will break, some will sell for a lot more. 
I had the well, I had one of the Mayers and I sold it and I never got over that, you know. So that's part of the reason why I, I want to get this one now. But I'm so relieved and happy that I do love it because I, I don't think I'd ever sell this guitar. Because it, it's just, aside from the weight, which is, you know, like like Noel uses a, 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 a heavy duty strap, it just looks and sounds so good. And and the reason I love this guitar especially is that it also just sounds phenomenal. These pick I don't, I don't know what these pickups are. But they just have that sound that I wanted. It's all it's all there, you know. And yes, I know that these are aged. They've actually taken the riding off the knobs. <laughs> it's, they've, they've worn it off. So you know, clever. again, yeah, clever. But again, it's like if that happens on one, on my guitars, it's a few years old. I'm out looking for a new knob for the guitar. <laughs> but on these ones, of course, it goes with the look. And I guess the opposite problem with a relic guitar is what if one of these gets lost and you have to replace it? Then you've got to buy a relic. <laughs> You got to, it's not going to match anymore, is it? You can't just buy a new one. So no. that's that's interesting. This also came with an age tip. It was uh, like orange. Okay. So I guess that's I don't know why. Um, this Bigsby is my first Bigsby. Has a piece of felt under here, so I guess so it doesn't hit mm -hmm. the body. And I was thinking, oh, what if I lose that felt? You know, that's, that felt is worth fifty bucks on this guitar. You know, <laughs> it's crazy. Isn't it? Probably a few hundred dollars, really. As <laughs> sad like, as that sounds. <laughs> But like I said, it's a different conversation. If you buy a guitar to play it, these things don't matter. I can have things repaired, rewired, buy a new felt, buy a new arm, whatever. It doesn't even matter if it matches anymore. But um, as an ager, I, I mean, this is Murphy Lab, and I'm quite new to that. I saw some at the Gibson Garage a couple of years ago. I saw the acoustics were, were aged really well. But I think, again, like the Martin, it's just done really well. Like, really, really, really well. Does it look like an actual one from that time? It does. You could tell by the way that the finish is checking. Even even on the camera, I could see it. It, it looks really, really good as far as something that I would expect, expect to see. And I've, I've seen a lot of those guitars in my time uh, in shops, working mm. in music stores. And again, if you bought one of these from the, the actual guitar, we're talking loads of money, right? Oh, yeah. You're looking at maybe 30000 plus, depending yeah. on the appointments on it. And how yeah. good of a condition the frets are in, and if the frets are even original, because a lot of those have been refretted. Great point. Actually, yes, with the Martins, it's the same thing. I've looked at um, original Martins for thirty thousand, but they've had refret, replacement mm -hmm. tuners, replacement bridge pins, replacement bridge, been refinished. I'm not kidding. I've seen a guitar like this refinished, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you're like, I'm I'm basically paying for the back and side wood. That's it. Everything else is redone. So why is that $30,000? That's kind of crazy. At that point, you might as well buy one of the recreations. Well, I guess, you know, yeah, you're paying for just the body, the body wood. It doesn't make sense. But yeah, I am That's just super impressed with the with, with, with this. It just looks, it looks great. It does. Now, now, would I like, if it was brand new, would I like it as much? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to throw in at this point, I have a Sir, which is relict. And I think it's different with them because they're like modern guitars. Yeah. But I, I really like the guitar. It's currently back with them because when I was playing a gig with it, I found a crack in the headstock. Or like, it was like a scratch, possibly a crack in the headstock. But yeah. guess what I thought when I saw that? You probably is it a happy. Is it a part of the relicking? I honestly oh. thought that. But they're making me a new neck. So with that, I liked other things about the guitar. And... I guess I can see it more on a Fender than I can on the Circus Sir on modern guitars, but I don't know. I'll talk about that in another video. But I want to show this because this is the oldest guitar that I actually have. And look at the condition. Clean. Okay, I, 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 I haven't wiped it down to be fair, but it's got, it's got the scratch. It does have the scratches from the pick because I'm a very heavy handed um, player, but I've had yeah. this for 20 years and it doesn't have anything like that. So that's, that's the point I wanted to make. That's one thing that I struggle with a little bit. This guitar is almost looks new if you cleaned it up a little bit, apart from the scratches on the pickguard. Yeah. Well, th is that a Mexican classic series? One of the first this, ones? This is, so I got this from America when I was living in England. This is a Mexican um, deluxe. I remember I wanted something with the humbuckers in it, and I've changed them out for Lollas. These are Lollas. They sound really great. 
the tuners are very plasticky feeling, but the actual guitar is great. Again, it's heavy, has a fat neck, but it sounds really good. And it's just a guitar that I've kept. This is the only guitar of any sentimental value to me that I've hung on to over the years. So I'm never going to get rid of this one. That's but I just want to show it because it it, it isn't really... <laughs> that's I guess that's why I struggle a little bit. It isn't aged really at all. I guess I'm just very careful with stuff as well. No, that's not it at all. And I'll tell you why. Because you mentioned the same thing with the Sheraton. The reason why neither of those guitars age has everything to do with the finish on them. They're oh. covered in poly. They're covered oh, okay. in poly. They don't age. They're not going to okay. age like that. So they might, if you play like a white poly finished guitar out in the sun, it might change color a little bit, but it's never, ever going to age the same way as a nitro finished guitar. It's going to, it was made so that it would look exactly the same 20 years later, granted for any oh, things okay. from, you know, things of, of normal play wear and scratches. So the finish, the finish is important. With, okay. Yeah, finish is important yeah. With, a, with, a, with a relic then. But I also meant yeah. like in the neck, there's not a single ding. There's no dings in the headstock. It has, it has some rust on the screws. That's it. Mm. And, and some scratches from the pick. But otherwise it's... So I guess I wanted to tie that in there. I bet some players buy one guitar and gig it for years and it does look like those. But I just wanted to throw it in there. I thought it was interesting that my actual personal guitars don't really age that much. The Taylor I had years ago was aging pretty heavily and that's one reason why I sold it on. But no, I guess me now I wouldn't sell it on. I would keep it and, and further relic it myself. So I guess we, we change over time with this stuff too. But I thought it was interesting... But that's a great point you put in about the finish as well. So a Relic guitar, they'll go for a thinner finish so that it does, uh, it would wear quicker, right? Yeah, well, it's not just that the finish is thinner. It's there's no polyurethane involved. The polyurethane mm. is what makes it so strong. So when you just skip that entirely and you do it like they used to do it um, in the 60s and the 50s, where it was just straight up nitrocellulose, spray on it, boom, you're done after that. There's nothing else to really seal it by comparison. Okay. Yeah, it's it, it, it's just never it's never going to age in the same way. Just it's just not going to be a lot. It's not going to happen. So can you get a relic guitar that is poly then? Or are you saying that wouldn't happen with poly ever? Technically, if you really forced it, you could. And sadly, I've seen people try and do it by hand and then sell them on reverb. But mm. the problem is, once you understand how paint works, when you see a guitar like a Squire Classic Vibe that you know has a poly finish on it, but they took sandpaper to it to make it look like it's a more expensive Fender Relic. You're like, well, wait, this doesn't make any sense because this guitar could never age that way. It, it would never happen. It's just against the, the, the okay. loss of the finish. I think it comes, it comes down to the guitar itself, and there's other specs that are really important to me. I just think now, actually, I think maybe I'm getting more into Relics, though. I don't know. I... I but there's so, there's so many guitars, there's so many levels of relicking, there's so many pros for for a relic instrument, and there's people watching this video that won't be agreeing with us and saying, well, actually not. If you were going to buy a guitar tomorrow, would you look for a relic, or would you? is it just like another thing to consider? It's, I, I'm not looking for one, but I'm also not looking to buy one that's perfect either. If it's the right guitar, it's the right guitar. I think that's the best way to go about anything. You just have to have an open mind and you'd be surprised. Look at you with this. You didn't expect to love that nearly as much as you do. You smile, you get giddy when we talk about that Noel Gallagher. And that's great, you should get excited about an instrument. I just, I, you know, I went live with that, I'm just sitting there thinking, this sounds great, this feels great. I'm, pl I'm, I'm also playing the songs and I'm thinking about my childhood. Yeah. There's, there's the, see, there's the memories with that guitar, it's the memories of my childhood through the Noel Gallagher, not through the relicking of my own guitar. But I've definitely in the past, I'm thinking now about more guitars. I had a Mini Maiden that I gigged hard for six years. It had blood, some blood stains inside it. It was really worn. It was like a mini guitar, acoustic guitar. Yeah. And I, I remember I got to the point where I was like, I'm going to sell that now. It looks worn. But I, I really feel like now I wouldn't. Now I just keep gigging it. Like Trigger from uh, Willie Nelson. You know, I, yeah. I think... I just think I've changed. I think I've gone from looking for things that are perfect and trying to keep things perfect, as yeah, you can see, this condition of this old, old guitar I have, to now seeing the value of the aging, the fact that it can look cool, the fact that it can feel cool, the fact that you're going to worry about the dings a little bit less. I see that value now in things as well. So I've definitely changed over time. 
I have two. There was a time where I would have never bought a Relic guitar. Never. Yeah. yeah. But it happens. And I'm, and I'm sure people are watching this that say I would never buy a Relic either, but that's that's just my story. My story is that I was like that, and I've, over the years I've changed. I'm not saying that people watching this will change, but I would like to hear from people watching what they think about it and if they've had experiences with it. That's why I really want to hear. I want to hear your experience. Like, have you... Have you liked relics and then not liked them for some reason? Something happened, like you couldn't tell if it was damaged, or have you not liked them and then liked them? Have you always been indifferent? I think for me, I love shiny brand new guitars and I love the relics. I love, I, don't, I just love all guitars. And now over the years, I can see the value in both. But I really like the feel. You know, one thing I don't like about this guitar, as I'm talking to you about it, is the neck is very sticky. Mm -hmm. It's very sticky, right? I, I like the bare wood. For me, that's a comfort thing as a player. I prefer that feel. Um, big dings in the guitar? Well, last week I returned a John Mayer signature to Guitar Center because they said it was in excellent condition, but it had two massive dings in the body. So for me, you know, I like the guitar. So I thought, well, I could keep it and I could relic it more and make it my own guitar. But I thought, no, they sold it to me as mint condition or at highly excellent condition, and it's not. And for that reason, I'm going to return it and look something else. I felt like, again, for me, it comes down to what am I paying for? Am I paying for a used guitar? Am I paying for a relic guitar? Or am I paying for a new guitar? So I think with, with me, it comes down to that. I want to know that I paid for that thing. Yeah, that's that's definitely where I come from when, I, when I'm buying something. Like, hey, I, I paid for a new guitar. I want it new. Or yeah. I bought that used. It's got a ding in it. Fine. I saved a thousand bucks, right? That's fine. Or I paid for that. I wanted a relic guitar. I paid for the relicking. That's great. Don't forget this as well. I forgot to put this in earlier. Often the relic guitars, or always the relic guitars, are more expensive. Mm -hmm. So the Martin, the aged Martin, is a, <laughs> I can't even say it, 800 or or $1,000 more than the one that's not aged because it takes them a lot of time to do it that well. So that's where a lot of people say that people can be crazy by buying those. You're paying someone more money to damage your guitar. And when you put it like that, it does sound crazy. But if it's not done well, then that's not a good thing, right? I haven't seen many Relic jobs that are done bad, but I bet you have, right? Yeah. And I bet that's not a good, that's not a cool thing. Because it, it doesn't look believable. It just looks like they've no. scratched it up for it, no reason. It's, the, it's a different it does. thing. It does. And some companies, you know, that's not something that you learn quickly. When you have a big company like Martin, like Fender, and like Gibson, they have all of these references of guitars that are 60, 70 years old in some cases, and with the Martins even older than that, to look back on and say, okay, so this is how they have aged. With newer brands, they don't know how their guitars may survive that same amount of time period because everyone uses a little bit of a different finish and things like that like prs is totally unique with the dyes that they use it's hard it's hard to tell so it's all interesting it's trial and error but i think that for the most part they're the big companies have really figured it out yeah and they've had a lot of time to figure it out it makes sense one thing to think about in the days ahead and maybe you can tell me the answer now why don't we relic everything why can't we buy relic pedals amplifiers <laughs> strings. Why can't we buy relic strings so they're already played in for people that like, that, that like that? Because you'd have to change them so much faster. You don't. There's certain things you don't want relic. Do you want a relic <laughs> toothbrush? No, oh, you gross. want a new toothbrush. Exactly. That's how I think of guitar strings. They, they got to be clean, man. Come on, there's a line. There's got to be some line here. <laughs> relic guitar pedal, relic guitar <laughs> amplifier. So it looks like the like those old Gibson amps. Imagine that. It looks like the actual old Gibson. Oh, I, I can see that. Has anyone done that? There's some small builders that do do that. But I have not seen Fender do that. And now that we're saying that out loud, I don't know why they haven't. I feel like if they... Because they used to sell custom shop guitars with the custom shop amp as like a combo package, as a collector thing. Why not relic <laughs> both of them? And have like, you've got the whole set. The 1954 starter pack. That'll be the next tone master. The next tone master. Tone master two. What's the difference? This one we oh. we relicked it. Di oh, digital and relic. That no. That's like poly relic. No, we're not doing that. Got to be a two amp. Something to think about. Something to think about later on when 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 you're uh, on reverb <laughs> looking for relic guitars. Anyway, like I said, this is just a conversation starter. I would like people to put in the comments below what you think about this topic. What you think about the guitars. 
and would you buy one or not? Let's just make a conversation about it. Um, yeah. Clearly, I now have some, and uh, like I said, I like both for different reasons, and I just like all guitars, which is a bit of a, a cop-out of an answer, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's kind of how I feel. And I, I knew when we started the video there wouldn't be an answer, but it's been fun to discuss it. So thank you, Jim. Free show, always good no to chat problem. with you. And Thanks. I look forward to seeing you, seeing you soon. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it.